<laughs> Anybody have a question? By the way, that tells you how old I am. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, how do you uh, be creative with a resume and still get through soft HR software, um, you know, that just scans your resume? Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, you can balance creative language and keywords. I mean, keywords are kind of effortless. I mean, it's maybe that's easy for me to say, but if you tell these stories, those keywords are going to be in there. I mean, Karen and I were talking about this earlier briefly about... I don't know anybody who gets jobs from blindly sending their resumes into databases. I hate to say it. Um, I, I understand why people do it. I've done it. I've never gotten a response beyond the robo auto responder that says we've gotten it. This is the way you get jobs, you know, and other networking groups and calling everyone you've ever known and taking them to lunch and saying, this is what I need to do. What are you up to? It's laborious. It takes forever. But I really think that it's the thing to do. However, um, you can balance the language. Because if you look at these, they're pretty word intensive. So you do have the creative language that a human looks at and goes, oh, cool. But there's a lot of keywords. These things are really packed with keywords. And you, oh, by the way, you can go online and just Google uh, resume keywords, and there's all kinds of sites out there with lists and lists. And you'll find you're already using most of them, but, you know, take them. Put them in your resume. Yeah. Hi. Um, you know, I'd always kind of had this idea. Um, I haven't written a resume in quite a long time. I've kind of been working for myself for a long while, and, I, and luckily I've through that I keep getting other jobs and so I haven't actually shown or had to have a resume forever. I guess my LinkedIn is kind of like that. But I had this idea recently about resumes and people to, like all my friends that are getting laid off or so and so and so and so and, and I certainly couldn't write anybody's resume. Um, but I was thinking about have, have has anybody ever thought about things of, you know how, I, like I'm mostly in the music industry so with a lot of that we hand out a lot of EPKs and VPKs and stuff like that. What about like a virtual resume where you could actually show yourself in the field like when you're saying storytelling and all that what about visuals that's great if you have a knack for doing that do it but the fact is what people don't realize and, and a lot of people say to me because i do work with generally people in creative fields that that's my area i don't work in with candidates in banking and high tech and healthcare. i just i can't relate to it um and um not that those aren't worthy fields um, but the thing is, a lot of people say to me, well, I'm a copywriter, I have fantastic samples, or I, I'm a, a graphic artist, I have fantastic samples. You know, why don't, aren't these people just going to want to look at my portfolio? Why do they even need to look at the resume? But to get people to look at your EPK, you need to send them to your, your resume. That's pretty much the way it works. And, and, and then what I was thinking was that it would, be, it would be a part of it, like when you're talking about just... Uh, a person that's a professional speaker or something like that. You could show yourself speaking at several different events yeah, as it's, part it's of a your great idea. visual thing. And then yeah. also, you know, when you're, you can show yourself on the job or, or doing certain things or different things that you do. You know, she's a graphic designer. She could sh kind of highlight her work inside the visual virtual resume. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, a lot of job seekers have dedicated websites uh, even if they're not creative people necessarily, even if they're not um, what you would think of as uh, in a position where you would need a website, shall we say. But a lot of people have dedicated websites, and that's where you would put that. Of course, you'd send it around to everybody. No, I want to create my own. Any, any coders in the room? No. <laughs> well, you might find a coder in the room. But, yeah, I mean, if you can do something like that, it's a great idea. Nine times out of ten, though, you need to send something to somebody to get them interested to look at that. Because, I mean, you know what it is. I mean, I don't know if you guys are like me, but if somebody sends me, oh, check this out, I will look and see how long it is. If it's nine minutes long, I don't care how cute those puppies are, I'm not looking at it. If it's two minutes long, I'll look at it. You know, you always kind of need to tease people into stuff. And, but, yeah, if you can do something like that, that's golden. Absolutely. Um, any tips on handling a situation where you want to be able to, um, okay, I work for an eight-person company, uh -huh. um, and some of our projects are um, confidential. Mm -hmm. 
and I want to be very expressive in my LinkedIn mm-hmm. profile, but my boss is always so on yeah. to LinkedIn. Yeah. What do I do? I want to put out there that I'm really looking to leave this place. But Well, first of all, you can change your LinkedIn settings. So you guys, some of you guys may know this, and I've had this question before. There is an artful way to present your resume on LinkedIn without making it obvious that you're looking to get a new gig. So it's a it's a diplomacy project. Uh, the language has to be kind of nuanced, but in your favor, you can have certain people be able to see it and certain people not to be able to see it. So that's one thing to look into at least. Uh, the other thing is, and, and what I was going to say in your favor is. Everybody has a LinkedIn profile. You, you know, you've got to do it. I, even if you're not looking, really, you should have a presence. I mean, you know, there's that conventional wisdom that the time to look for a new job is when you have a job, when you're happiest at your current job is when you really need to be thinking about looking for your next job. And that is so impossible. I don't know who does that stuff. Always keep your networks fresh. Always, you know, always network all the time. It's true. I can't argue with it. So you should have some LinkedIn presence no matter what. And it doesn't, it may seem to you, oh my God, this is so obvious that I'm looking for a new gig, but you may be overthinking that a little bit. So it, it, it's possible to do it. To, to, this is just an advertisement for me. This is not necessarily, I want somebody to, to hire me. This is just my little calling card on the internet. I know it's a tricky situation, and discretion is everything, so I appreciate the, the question. Um, I, so I have a similar question. I had a job, a really great job, where I was the, had an amazingly huge title, but unfortunately it was in an industry that is considered a legal gray area in the U.S., mm-hmm. so I don't have it on my LinkedIn. I have it wrapped into you know my last eight years of my life where I've been consulting. Because it, it was technically a contract gig, because it was for an international company, and so I wasn't getting typical payroll. But it really was a very full-time job for three years. So it's not on my LinkedIn. It is on my resume that I send to people, of course. But put it in your LinkedIn. Put it in my LinkedIn. <laughs> you yeah. have way more to gain than you have to lose. Not according to my lawyer. But okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not a lawyer. So if your lawyer says don't put it in there, he trumps me in a heartbeat. How, how, do, I, how, do, I, um, like, how do I address it? Do I address it in my cover letter? Because people are seeing my resume in my cover letter. You got it. I know the job you're talking about, dude, and it was amazing. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you really kicked butt there. So you yeah. got to use it to any, in any capacity yeah. that you can. Yeah. Um, especially the cover letter, because cover letters are kind of a whispering campaign. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, LinkedIn is very public, yeah. obviously. So I just keep it out of LinkedIn, but maybe... Yeah, I mean, that might be... Uh, ask the lawyer, but this might be the happy medium, is leave it off LinkedIn. In the resume and mention in the cover letter in case they looked at LinkedIn. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The other thing, and this comes up with people who've been in the job market for a long time. I don't go back more than... T- in my, with my clients, I will not go back more than 10 or 15 years. Because, again, you get into this thing like, you're 40, oh, my God. So, um, but I will put uh, something like, um, you know, ability to get the job done informed by previous career in film production. Something like that. So you can, you can indicate skills that you developed at that gig and allude to it in LinkedIn without going into the kind of details I'm talking about. And I'll be happy to just help you with that. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Susan, I know we're talking about it as well. Why couldn't you just say, you know, VP communications at confidential and then speak obliquely to everything you did that was completely kicking ass? That's not a bad idea either. Yeah. I mean, depend, yeah, again, ask the lawyer. But I, that's not a bad idea. Just, I mean, because you don't have to say who you did it for, just say what it was you did. I mean, crisis PR was insane. And if you can handle crisis PR, then you can handle non-crisis Yeah, PR it's really case. true. I mean, you've got to work that as, as much as you possibly can without getting into trouble. And you're not the only one in this boat either. You know, there, there are other people, I think, who've got this similar dilemma. So might want to maybe poke around a bit and see how other people are handling it. 
It's kind of similar to yours, um, just piggybacking off hers, but what if you have a passion project or some sort of entrepreneurial venture that you're not profiting off of yet, but you, you think or you know that the skills, skill set that you've acquired from doing this is relevant to the next job, but you don't want to make it seem like I, my worry is or that they're going to feel like it's going to interfere with the job. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I understand the concern. I mean, you do, you do need to represent yourself as being willing to give heart, right. body, mind, and soul to this next gig mm -hmm. that you're exactly. um, applying for. But that's, I can tell by the way you're saying it, there's some really compelling stories in there. So yeah, you've got, you got to use that. I mean, you know, a lot of people I work with have pretty, they're, they're freelancers and they're lucky that they have a skill that they can freelance or they're not flight stewards. You know what right, I mean? Right, you right, get laid right. off, it's like, geez, I need to find a new plane. But if you're a writer, if you're an artist, um, so a lot of people have pretty thriving freelance careers that they have continued um, while they've had full-time gigs. But I think employers understand that there's a balance there okay. and that um, that you're, you're going to give your all to their project. I mean, I think that right. is, okay. is understood. But I would represent, whatever you're talking about, I would represent that thoroughly okay. in your resume. Yeah, I've always, it's, it's not just me. I have a friend as well, and she is in the midst of trying to start her own travel show, but she's also looking for a job in television. Right. But it's one of those things, like, do I want to put that on there because it shows that I am have this skill set, I know, like, how to get a pilot out there, I know, like, kind of just the rigor morale of, like, what to do, yeah. but then at the same time without compromising the time that I'm investing. Yeah, in I, I, I see your you point. I mean, I mean, you don't, you don't want the prospective employer to think, oh, this person's going to bolt. Right. You know, as soon right. as her other exactly. thing gets off the ground, she's totally going to bolt. Exactly. Obviously, you don't want to send that message. And mm -hmm. the, But there is a way you can do it. You have to finesse it a little bit. You have to... You have to be careful about it. But, I mean, commitment is so important. The fact that you're showing commitment to this passion project, aside from the skills you've developed, is important. I mean, they want somebody who, okay, now she's going to commit to me, mm -hmm. but it's still a plus. 